Matthew 24, 36 to 44. But, uh, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would ha happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be in will be grinding with the hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you don't, do not expect him. So basically Jesus is answering this one question, when are you coming back? And it's also interesting that Jesus' answer is, in fact, I don't know. However, he's leaving some clues, instructions as what ought his believers, his followers to do in the meanwhile. And one of the most striking instructions is keep watch. As you know, some of you might know, uh, my dad passed away recently. And my dad being dad, he, he, had, he was well prepared for his own death and he had left us a little um, letter that he'd written years ago, instructions before, for us to read at the time of his death. I suppose any loving father and loving person knowing that they are going would want to leave some instructions. And so Jesus did as well. I went to the Caldeglen Zoo to film meerkats. Because if an animal, um, there's a group of animal who keeps watch is a, a meerkat tribe. There's always one lifting up their head, looking around. But when I arrived at the Caldeglen Zoo, guess what I found? I found this. No one was keeping watch. I think the meerkats were quite happy in the comfortable setting of Caldeglen Zoo, under the warm light. Perhaps they knew very well there was no danger waiting for them since they're used to this small enclosure. And so they were happily sleeping, no one keeping watch. I wonder sometimes if our Christian church yeah, are like the meerkats at Calder Glen Zoo. We were told to keep watch. It's our instinct to keep watch. But we are quite comfortable or quite certain that no danger is around us. So we sleep. And this is something Jesus warned against. Make sure you are not sleeping, spiritually speaking. Make sure you are alerted. And the imagery in this passage is all about destruction. Because in the Old Testament, the day of the Lord was two-sided. One side, there was destruction expected, like in Noah's flood. But it's only for those who are waiting eagerly for Jesus that the day will bring something good. And so the whole passage, the Olivet Discourse as it's called, ends up Jesus saying, and they will go now away to eternal punishment and the upright to eternal life. And he told his disciples, it will be Passover, as you know, in two days time and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified.